See, the past is too painful, so we don't think about it. But the sad part is, we don't think about the future either. Living life with hope can be scary. It can be scary because if we hope and we're wrong, we get disappointed. If you desire a fresh start, it's simple. You just need to repent of your sins and receive Jesus as your Savior. Well, good morning. How was everybody's Christmas? How was it? Good. So I, I've come to this conclusion, why Christmas, well, I know why Christmas is, but why New Year's is after Christmas is because we gain a lot of weight from all the food we eat. Um, how many of you have ever made a New Year's resolution? Okay, I have. And some of them may seem like this, and I'm not saying this is you, but this is just typical ones that have come up. I'm going to stop some bad habits that I have. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to find a new job. I'm going to be a better person. I'm going to be a better father. I'm going to be a better wife. See, the problem is, however, with New Year's resolutions is that if you're like me, they start off really good, but they end up really nowhere. For one, that's most common is to lose weight. One year I got a gym membership, and uh, that's about as far as I got, is the membership to it. See, our, my intentions were good. Our intentions are good, on, but our will and our ability, they always seem to backfall. Back to the same habits, the same actions, the same patterns, which brought us to the place we are in the first place. See, when this happens enough times in our lives, we feel that our situation becomes hopeless. This morning we're going to read a story, we're going to be camped out in this story. And it's, for most of you, you've heard the story before. It's when Jesus is at the well, and the Samaritan woman comes. But we're going to look at it a little differently. We're going to look at it, at it in the woman's perspective. I know that's really hard to come across for us men in the woman's perspective, but I am going to do my best. So let's go. If you want to turn with me to John, or you can just follow me on the Sky Bible. Um, John 4. It says this. Now he had to well, I'll read a different version. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town of Samaria called Sukkot. Now I'm probably saying it wrong but don't throw stones yet. Near the plot of ground, Jacob had given his son Joseph. Joseph's well was there. And Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down by the well, and it was about noon. The Samaritan woman came and drew water. Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples have gone to town. So we're going to look at a couple things first before we go into the story. First, Physically, I don't know if you knew this, physically, Jesus did not have to go to Samaria. He could have been like everybody else the go that went around Samaria because he was a Jew and that's what Jews did. It didn't, Jews did not get along with Samaritans. They called them half-breeds. They avoided them at all costs. But the text tells us that he had to go through. Samaritan, because he was on a mission and he needed to accomplish it. Second, in many other translations, it says in about the sixth hour, here the NIV helps us out for those who don't know what the sixth hour is, and it's about noon. Therefore, it is hot. We don't know what that is like up here in the UP, but it was hot. It's hot then. So normally they would not go get water at this hour. So why was this woman going to get water at this time? Okay, so this is where we're going to go in the, the woman's perspective in this story. The woman is in her room. She picks up her clay jar. She opens the door, and the heat of the day smacks her in the face. Again, we don't know what that's like. We can relate it to the cold hitting us in the face, but... Hits her in the face. She's taken back for a moment. She exits her head, pointing, poking her head out the door, looking up the road, up and down. 
She sees that it's fairly clear, so she walks out. See, it's not a really good time to fetch water. In fact, it's not a good time to be outside at this time. The sun is at the peak and is beating down on her. She could go later when it's cooler, but that would mean facing other women there. That's why she's going now. She doesn't want to face other women in the town, she's known as the bad girl. She is sleeping with a guy whom she is not married to. She has already been married five times, and none of those relationships worked out. She has tried to start fresh before, but her circumstances seem to come back to her each time. Each time she vowed it would be different, life would be better, but it never was. Now she has given up on marriage. She has given up on really living. Because she has given up on hope. Now she was just existing day to day, living a life of a, living a life of a shadow. And if you're taking notes, the first one, living life without hope is only a shadow. In 1 Chronicles 29, 15, it says, Our days on earth are like shadow. It's like a shadow without hope. See, our shadows exist, but they don't live. Are you living life on earth like a shadow? Are you living life without hope, only existing? See, you go from day to day doing what you need to do. You try not to dwell on the past because it brings up hurts and bad choices that you made. Why did you start smoking, drinking, doing drugs? Now you're addicted. Why did you give in to peer pressure? Why didn't you go to college? Why did I get divorced? Why, why, why? See, the past is too painful, so we don't think about it. But the sad part is, we don't think about the future either. Because you don't think that it's for you. Instead, you just exist. You don't really live. You only live a shadow of your life. You get up, work another day, do another load of laundry. That's not me. I don't do laundry. But do another load of laundry. Make dinner. Make another sales call. You don't think about the past. You don't think about the future. You just go and go and do what you need to do. You exist, but you don't live. That's what the woman is doing. She goes to draw water, some water from the well. This story continues. The man at the well, there's a man at the well. But as she nears, she notices him there and that he's a Jew. She probably gives out a deep silence and thinks he won't speak to her. Men don't speak to women, and Jews certainly don't speak to Samaritans. Her mind drifts for a moment. In fact, nobody speaks to her. They may talk about her. They may talk in front of her, but it's usually calling her names. Then she's jarred back to reality. When she hears a voice. The man asks her for a drink, but in a pleasant way. She's not used to this. She's not used to someone talking to her in a nice way, asking a question nicely. For a second, she lets herself begin to hope. Hope to be able to have a conversation with a person. Hope for a different life. Hope for a future. Hope for a fresh start. But she stops herself. Back to reality. Don't hope. Hope only means disappointment. Who is this man, she thinks. Does he need me to remind him of the situation? Continuing on, it says, The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who, it, and who it is that asks you for
for, the, for a drink. You would have asked him and you would have been given the living water. <laughs> living water, she probably thinks. What is this man talking about? He has nothing to even draw water with. How can he talk about living water? Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw, draw with and the, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this well and drank from it himself as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Eternal life? First he's talking about living water. Or, yeah, living water. Now he's talking about eternal life. This guy is crazy, she's probably thinking. But then she starts to drift again. I would like to have any life. What water is he talking about? I would love not to come back to the well anymore. So I wouldn't have to see others. Hope begins to surface again. Continuing on John 14, 16, it says, The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, go, call your husband and come back. He commands her to bring, he, he comm his command brings her back to her situation. She doesn't have a husband. In fact, the guy that she's with is not even, it's not even her husband. Oh yes, she thinks her life is a mess. But no need to tell this man everything, just tell a part truth. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus, Jesus said to her, You are right when you say you have no husband. In fact, you have five husbands, and the man you are now with is, is, not, your, is not your husband. What you have said is quite true. <laughs> I can only imagine her being like, Duh. Like, what? Who is this man? Well, a few minutes ago, she began to have hope. The pain of the woman's choices and her sins brings her back, hits her smack in the face. This conversation is starting to get scary. See, while you're living without hope, it's only a shadow of living. Living life with hope can be scary. It can be scary because if we hope and we're wrong, we get disappointed. So many times we are disappointed in life. We are disappointed by people. We are disappointed by circumstances. We are disappointed in ourselves. So we don't put ourselves in the position to hope. We think it will be better not to hope. We will think it, we think it will be better to make, it will make our life easier not to hope. But as we live a hopeless life, we don't really live we only exist. We are only a shadow. Continuing on. So the woman thinks to herself, let's change the subject. Let's get, get this off of, off of me and something else. Now I'm going to read this because that's big. Sir, the woman said, I can see you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place we must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus replied, believe me, woman. You know, Jesus had attitude too, all right? <laughs> believe me, woman. A time is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. And Jesus declared, 
I who speak to you am he. Then the disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want or why are you talking with her? Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town. So rushing back to town, only many thoughts had to be rushing through her mind. This man, could he be the Messiah? See, some Samaritans, they believed that the first five books of the Bible were the word of God. And so it so happens that Exodus is there. And Exodus 3.14 says this, God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites, I am has sent you. This man just claimed those words who said he was, I am. Could he be the Messiah? Could he be God in the flesh? I'm sure her blood was cruising by this point. Her heart rate is elevated. Her palms are sweaty, and it's not because it's hot. I'm sure she was scared and excited at the same time. I've experienced that. My wife's pregnant. <laughs> she was feeling alive. If this was a Messiah, if this was God, then God was speaking to me, to her, to someone like her, a sinner. Someone who made the choice that, has, that she had made. Someone that, who lived as she lived. Someone who was living life as a shadow, existing but not living. He talked to someone like that. What does this mean? Was there hope for her? Was there hope to start fresh? Was there not a hope that would just change her circumstances? Was there a hope that she would be changed? A hope to really live and not just exist in the shadows? See, at this point, hope was coming alive in her. She was beginning to experience it already. While living life without hope, as she had done for years, was only existing. But while living life with hope can be scary, living life can ho with hope is real life. She was starting to really live because she believed that Jesus was the Messiah, the one who the Savior is the Savior of the world. Where our hope is matters for everything. Paul tells us in Romans 5, 5, it says this, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through his Holy Spirit who, was given, who has been given to us. See, so when we hope in the wrong things, we get disappointed. When we hope in others, when we hope in circumstances, we get let down. But if you don't get one thing out of this, get this. When you put your hope in the living God, who loved us, who sent his son to die for us, to save us from our sins, you will not be disappointed. You will truly start to live, maybe for the first time. Live this life for eternity. In John 10.10 it says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. The story continues. When she made it back to town, no longer thinking about what other people might say to her or thinking about her, not afraid to talk to them, no longer mad at the people of this town who for so long treated her like an outcast. She has been given hope while they were, while she may have had the past of with five different men and husbands in the future. It was uncertain that she was really living now because her hope was in God. Who have come to who has came to meet her where she was at just happens to be at a well. She believed and she wanted to tell people about it. John 4, 29 through 30 says, Come, see a man who told everything I 
ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way to him, towards him. Many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told her everything I did. He knew her past. He knew her presence. But he spoke to her anyway. There is hope for a fresh start, no matter of your past. No matter what the choices you went through. No matter what you're going through right now. God gives hope for a fresh start. Continuing on, John 4, 40-42, it says, When the Samaritan, Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay, stay with them. He stayed with them for two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man truly is the Savior of the world. Do you have hope today? Do you want to live a life of hope? So where it's, it starts with inviting God in. In John 1.12, it says this. Yet all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, if anyone in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, and the new is here. God loves you and wants to give you hope for the future, no matter what your past looks like, no matter where you find yourself today. He can give you a fresh start by making you a new creation. Are you ready for a fresh start? For a new year to live a life with God? If you desire a fresh start, it's simple. You just need to repent of your sins, confess to God, that, and receive Jesus as your Savior. Some of you have found yourself here because a family brought you here. Or maybe you came to Sunday before Christmas or the Christmas Eve service. But for some reason, you're here. And that reason is because God wants to give you hope. Living life with hope means living a life with God. Jeremiah 29, 11, many of us have heard this. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you, will be, then you will call me and then come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your hearts. Are you ready to seek after God? Are you ready to live a life of hope that won't disappoint you? He wants to offer you the hope and the opportunity of a fresh start. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. It doesn't matter about your past. It doesn't matter of what you did before you came to church. All that matters is that if you believe in Christ, you are a new creation. See, I urge you, if, if you have more questions of what it means to be a Christian, of what it means to go to church, I encourage you to come to the next series, The Core. Because that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about the values of the church, what we believe. And if you have any questions during that opportunity, I encourage you to ask somebody. And if they don't know, hope they ask somebody. I 
Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, that we can look at it and we can apply it to our lives. Lord, as this Christmas season has, has come and gone so fast, Lord, let us not forget what the true meaning of it was. That you sent your son to come down on earth in, to, in human form. Lord, that one day he would die on the cross for our sins, to set us free. Lord, I believe, Lord, there's people in this room, Lord, that, that need an encounter with you. It may not be at the well, Lord, but I, I know, Lord, it could be it. We're in their seats. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would just meet with them where they are. When as the new year comes, Lord, I pray, Lord, that as a congregation, we don't dwell on the things that we have done that hold us back. Lord, but we focus on you. Lord, start preparing our hearts now as we go into a week of prayer in the, in the beginning of the year. Well, let us start now to seek after you with all our hearts.